Well, it's winter in New England, but you wouldn't know it. 40 degrees in the middle of January, can you believe that? It just doesn't get any better than this for hiking anyway. If you're a skier, maybe not so much. But hiking out in the woods, and I bought some trekking poles about uh, three or four weeks ago, and uh, was a little reluctant to do so. So I thought I'd uh, dedicate a video about him. Trekking poles, love them or leave them. Coming up next on Black Squirrel Bushcraft. Stay tuned. Listen, I'm, I'm sure the intro to this this video is in a lot warmer uh, uh, was on a lot warmer day than it is today. I just took my jacket off. The only reason I did was I was a little sweaty getting up here, and I'm hoping to dry off. But it is chilly. My hands are starting to get a little cold, so I'm gonna I'm gonna expedite through this video. But I wanted to talk to you today about trekking poles, and in bushcraft we don't really talk about trekking poles too much. A walking stick, perhaps, but. Trekking poles, not so much, and, and I'm not quite sure why that is. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about the pluses and minuses of these, whether you love them or you hate them, uh, but why I think that they should be a necessary part of your bushcraft package. Okay, so I started off using a couple of ski poles just because I've got a condition called spinal stenosis. It's a, it's a back condition, and I really wanted to carry a pack through the woods but I was kind of afraid of the stability in terms of my spine until I got in better shape. So I used the ski poles for a while and that seemed to be pretty good. But somebody told me trekking poles might be a better, uh, better application for me. So my wife actually wanted a pair, so I got her a pair for Christmas. And you know how this story is going to go. I borrowed them, used them, loved them. So I started doing some research on some of my own and I bought these. These are black diamond. Alpine carbon corks, and the cork refers to the handle. We're going to talk about all that in a second. But I have to tell you, I'm I'm an absolute I'm sold on these, uh, and here's why. The pros on these: you can use these poles for anything in camp. You can use them for tent poles. You can use them for your tarp, putting your tarp up. Uh, you, they are a necessary part when you're in, when you have a 30 or 40 pound push pack and you're crossing a river or something and there's smaller stones that you might get a little bit unstable now you've got some stabilization right in the middle of the stream right at your fingertips uh, they help take the energy that normally was was the sole responsibility of your legs and transfer a little bit up to your arms so now your arms get to help out in the process of of hiking through the woods whether that's climbing up a hill uh, on the flats or descending um, so, and, and for me, uh, it was all about stabilization, keeping my back, you know, keeping the, the pack from shocking uh, my upper torso. Now, I know what you're going to say if you had a, a properly adjusted hip belt, probably that wouldn't happen. But still in all, I still needed that upper body stabilization, and I got it with these. Okay. Why, why a trekking pole versus a ski pole or a walking stick? Well, both of those items generally are not adjustable, okay? And that's really important, A, for the fit, okay? Because you have to fit them a certain way to your particular body. And B, you can adjust these also if you're going up long stretches of hills, you make them a little shorter so they can be up in front of you and help you with your leverage. If you're going down a long stretch of, of trail uh, and a descent for a long period of time, you can make them longer so that when they go out in front of you to help slow, you know, help the braking process of your descent, you're not bending too far over into them. And believe it or not, sometimes you do have a lot of cross hill work. One can be shorter than the other. You can't really do that with a stick. 
Um, you can adjust these very easily. They'll adjust up to 50% one way or the other. Okay. Some of the differences that you want to look in, in different ski poles, the grips, cork, rubber, plastic, adjustable straps is a, is a must. Uh, you can do some research on why cork, why foam, why plastic, etc. But for me, uh, sweat absorption was key, so I got cork, uh, and they're also very lightweight. Um, they're pretty easy to maintain. There is kind of a funky way to clean them with sandpaper and uh, dishwashing soap, and we'll probably do that in another video. As you can see, these are kind of dirty already. Uh, notice that there's even some secondary grips here, so that if you have a short, you know, for the short term, if you need some leverage going up a hill, you don't have to readjust your poles. You just can chalk up on them a little bit. Again, the adjustments, uh, the Black Diamond calls these the flick lock system. It just an open and close, slide them back and forth. Uh, the tips, now this is what you don't get on a walking stick. You don't get a high carb carbide steel tip that'll dig into ice and rock. Uh, and also, it's replaceable. Not only is it replaceable, and they have different attachments that you can put here, but the cool thing is they have rubber uh, attachments to go over these if you, that you can keep in your bag or in your pocket. If you do long uh, periods of hiking on, say, a road or a, or a hard pack, a dirt road, asphalt road, what have you, you don't get that clicking noise every time you're, you're walking. It's pretty quiet. I have a pair myself. Uh, when the woods got to be too warm and I couldn't walk because the snow was building up under my shoes and I hit the roads, they were great. Uh, but, and again, they slip on, slip off, and they don't come off. I've done several miles with them, they don't pop off. Uh, the material themselves, you'll find different materials out there, different aluminums. These happen to be uh, uh, carbon, carbon fiber. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive, they're a little bit, but they're a little less weight. So depending on your pocketbook and your application, what your needs are in terms of weight, uh, you can find different different uh, materials out there that, that uh, might apply to you. Now, I will say this, they run these particular poles are a little over a pound for the pair. Uh, yeah, it seems like it's a lot of weight. Truthfully, I don't really notice it. As a matter of fact, I think I can go farther and carry more with these than I can without them. So to me, that just makes sense. Now, okay, so we talked a lot about the advantages to these and what they do. Let's talk about what they don't do. Um, and they're real, the discussion is actually pretty short, at least it is for me. The couple of downsides that I've seen for these off in the time that I've used them is if you're going through some tight quarters like uh, low huckleberry or low blueberry bushes uh, at least it is, that's what we we have in the northeast uh, maybe you could see some laurel around here if I had to bushwax through some of this laurel I would probably be a, a little confined and, and be catching them all the time uh, I certainly do catch leaves on these, poking them like you have an old garbage poker, you know, and once in a while you got to take them and pull them off. But the confining of a, of a trail that isn't too wide or you're bushwhacking through the brush, yeah, these are going to have a tendency to, to drag a little bit. Now, for me, I it's easy for me to bushwhack because I just kind of flip them up like this and just walk through the woods, and I don't, I don't have a problem. Most of the brush around here is from the waist down. Uh, so that's how I get around there. Uh, at any event, I'm going to leave some links at the bottom of the video, uh, not just for the company Black Diamond, but also a couple of resources where you can go and check out how to use them. Because let me tell you, I could spend a whole other video on just how to use them. If that's something that's important to you guys and you'd like to see me do one, I'd be happy to do it. But there are plenty of them out there. Uh, so I'll leave some links down there and also some links as to where you can get uh, the Black Diamond, uh, Alpine Carbon Cork, and other types of trekking poles, and what some of the prices are. Okay, so if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos in the future from uh, Black Squirrel Bushcraft, go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have you. And comments, suggestions, and uh, helpful hints in the comments section would be great. This is only my second video. 
I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. So let's get out in the woods, be safe. Take care now.